Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ wants me to share his truth from his word. And that's, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, the Holy Spirit, for his divine revelation of his word, wisdom, revelation, knowledge. So that's true born again Christians, believers everywhere can be able to grow in the grace of God through Christ Jesus' holy words. And it's so Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, it's something very interesting that the Holy Spirit wants to tell us. In You notice in Hebrews 12 verse 2, that's that uh, the words looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who is Christ Jesus, the Redeemer, speaking to in Hebrews 12 verse 2? And the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to true born again Christians, believers, in Hebrews 12 verse 2. Why? Because Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he has to finish my faith and every other true born again Christians, believers, faith. So right there, that's in defense of eternal security of the believer in Christ Jesus because Jesus uh, cannot lie. He he basically uh, promised it his children who are saints of God, true born again Christians, believers that he is the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Okay, let's go over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 Being confidence of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So God will complete us unto the Lord Jesus Christ the day of the Lord Jesus Christ up in heaven. <coughs> so, uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 is also in defense of eternal security of the true born again Christians believers. God has to finish his good work in us. And in Hebrews... 12, verse 2, that says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, so when a unsaved and unbeliever gets truly saved by the grace of God, it, it, it is then God's grace that, that keeps our faith uh, secured. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ that has to finish true born again Christian believers' faith. And so 
let's have a look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to verse 9 that says for by grace are ye saved it through faith and that's not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works least any man should boast so we 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 a, a, a person uh, in a uh, with the unsated unbeliever, their righteousness is as filthy rags. Uh, basically, there's a there's a uh, righteousness which is, which uh, the worldly uh, worldly has that the unbelievers uh, try and use, uh, but the righteousness of God is the righteousness of God that will take a, per, a true born again Christian believer to heaven, to heaven, the kingdom of God. And so let's have a read of Jude chapter 1 in verse 24 to verse 25 says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So, God has promised it that he will he will keep his true born again Christian believers from falling away from him. So, true born again Christian believers cannot can never ever fall away from God. the The, the evidence is in God's word. People need to start reading God's word and seeing the truth of what the Holy Spirit is saying unto us, the body of Christ. And so that there can never be confusion and uh, with God. And so God can also help us not to be confused. In. Uh, let's go to Psalms chapter... 71 verse 1 says in thee O Lord do I put my trust let me never be put to confusion so King Prophet David he prayed and asked God that he wants to put his trust in God so that God will never let him be in confusion so King David said, Deliver me in thy righteousness, and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me, and save me. So that's Psalm, Psalm chapter 71, verse 2. So King David, he prayed in Psalm chapter 71, verse 1, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. So, True born again Christian believers can also pray that God will not allow them to be put to confusion. And when, when you pray that prayer, God will help his true born again Christian believers not to be confused or put in confusion. And so let's have a look at Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10. Now this scripture, false teachers and false prophets and false pastors and false teachers, uh, false converts will not, uh, will not, uh, when, will, they will not, uh, think that this verse is 
implying that Christians cannot lose salvation. They would try and twist this scripture to try and confuse the, the, the hearts of the simple. Now in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39 says, But we are not of them who draw back unto partition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So <clears throat> false teachers will try and quote Hebrews 10 verse 38 that says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So then they go on and say Christians can lose salvation. That's not what God says because they don't go to the next scripture. The, the false teachers do not go to the next next scripture after Hebrews 10 verse 38. They, they miss Hebrews 10 verse 39 because they don't want people to know the truth. Because in Hebrews 10 verse 39 says, But we are not of them who draw back unto partition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So, so who, is, who is God speaking to there in Hebrews 10 verse 39? And the answer is true born again Christians believers. And so... Unsaved unbelievers will twist Hebrews 10 verse 38 to try to try and uh, justify their falsehood, which uh, which unsaved unbelievers will try and do to, to try and deceive the hearts of the simple. Many people have been mis misled and, and and gone astray by believing that. Christians can lose salvation based on Hebrews 10 verse 38. But if only they would understand and pray that God will not put them to confusion and that they, that they rely on the Holy Ghost to, to take them to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39 that says, but, that says, but we are not of them who draw back unto partition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I'll read that scripture again, Hebrews 10 verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto partition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So uh, partition is what Judas did to Jesus. He betrayed Jesus. Christian believers are not going to do that to Jesus because it's clear, uh, it's clear cut. Uh, Hebrews 10 verse 39 says, But we are not of them who draw back unto partition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So <clears throat> we can only see that, that it is impossible for true born again Christians believers to draw back unto partition. And in Hebrews 10 verse 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So the God is using the word if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure pleasure in him. So it's a warning. So when that's being preached to unsaved unbelievers, the Spirit of God uh, will move upon with whom he wants to convert and save. So then they'll think, well, I don't want to draw back. Uh, I want to have the pleasure of God in me. So then once they receive that they want the pleasure of pleasure of God in them, they will understand Hebrews 
10 verse 39 that says, But we are not of them who draw back unto partition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. <coughs> so, uh, so, 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 let's go to Romans chapter 11. In Romans chapter 11 verse 1 says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So that's clear cut. True born again Christians, believers, can never be cast away from God. It, 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 it's, it's clear. It's clear, in, it's clear in God's word. Uh, God forbid that he will cast away his true born again Christians, believers. Now let's look at uh, Romans chapter 11, 11 verse 2 to verse 3 that says, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. So we can see that God uh, cannot cast away his people, which he foreknew. So if God saves a person, he knows them. So therefore, he can't cast away his children. So, let's look at Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 that says, Let your conversation be, with, be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. <coughs> Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 40. And I will make an everlasting covenants, everlasting covenants with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. Now that that is awesome. That is what the Word of God says. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 40, I'll read, I'll read the scripture again. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. Now let's look at Timothy. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter four, verse eighteen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will pres pres prever preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. And let's look at Titus chapter 3 in verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
but according to his mercy he saved it us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So that's evidence that is it is uh, God's righteousness, his mercy that saved it us. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. <clears throat> so, it is the righteousness of God that gets me, me to heaven. I glory in my God Jehovah, who is Christ Jesus, my risen Lord, the Holy Ghost. And so... <clears throat> So the Lord Jesus Christ, he does not want us to, to fear Satan. And so true born again Christian believers should never be worried about God sending them to hell fire. Why? Because God will never turn his back on his true born-again Christians' believers. <coughs> now, in 1 John 4 verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear be Fear, because fear hatheth torments, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. I read that scripture again because this is very important. First John 4 verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hatheth tor torments, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. And so God, he wants his children, true born again Christian believers, to, to walk in his love and have the fear of God, which, which is godliness. And the fear of God is wisdom from God. And God wants people to know his truth. Now, in... First John chapter 2 verse 19 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. So <coughs> in First Timothy... Chapter 4, verse 1, that says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter, latter times some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's talking about false teachers. They will, they will depart from the faith because they won't continue. If they're of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, they would no doubt have continued with the Christians. If, if uh, like with Christians, they continue in the faith. First John 2 verse 19 proves that Christians 
will continue. I'll read it first John two verse fourteen at uh, first John two verse fourteen says I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and it, and ye have overcome the wicked one. So we overcome the wicked one. And so who is the wicked one? Satan. And so basically... In in First John two verse nineteen says they went out from us, but they were not, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would, no doubt, have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So. <coughs> The Apostle Paul, God, um, is speaking to the Apostle John. Sorry, not the Apostle Paul, but the Apostle John. And so God is telling the Apostle John <coughs> that Christians will stay, false teachers will go out because they're not of us. They're not of the true born-again Christian believers. And so in... First John 2 verse 25 that says and this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life so who is God speaking to in first John 2 verse 25 and the answer is every true born again Christian believers and I will read first John 2 verse 25 again and this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life now that eternal life has been promised it before the world because we can see in Titus let's go to Titus chapter One verse two Titus chapter one verse two says In the hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised it before the world began. So God promises eternal life to those who believe in his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God loves us and God do, does not desire us to perish. In First John chapter 3 verse 9 that says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, which is born of God, the flesh or the spirit? And the answer is the spirit of the true born again Christian believer. And so that's cannot sin the true born again christian believers spirit cannot commit sin and yeah so in let's have a look at first john 3. Chapter 3 verse 7 Little children, let no man deceive you. He that's 
doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And so that's what God wants us to understand. He wants us to understand so that once once a person understands the word of God, they're saved it. And so basically God He loves He loves us that much that He does not want us to perish in the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone and a fire. And so I hope that this message will touch the hearts of baby Christians, baby true born again Christian believers, and even the matured true born again Christian believers. And so I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that his anointing will flow through this message, touching the hearts of even those who have been deceived with the false meat of every true born again Christian believers can lose salvation. That that is not biblical. It is false. It's false meat that cannot save anyone. Even Satan he believes that Christians can lose salvation, yet Satan's not even saved it. And so basically the Lord Jesus Christ has to remain all powerful. And by being by the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jehovah being all powerful, he cannot once become unpow unpowerful. So basically the Lord Jesus Christ is all powerful to keep his children from going to hellfire. And so I would like to uh, end this message.